praise the Lord, everybody. Aren't you glad to be in church tonight? As you can tell, pastor's off on vacation. This is a good thing. He needs time to spend with his family. God instituted the family before he did the church. We want him restored. We want him filled and able to pour into us. So anytime he wants to go on a vacation, we should be excited. But something about when the man of God and the shepherd leaves the house, I feel that there's always an unusual stirring of the Holy Ghost. I believe it's like God saying, even though the shepherd's not here, I'm still going to sustain the flock. And so I believe in my spirit. I text, I text Brother Tanner today, and I told him, I said, I feel the Holy Ghost. I believe you've got a word. And I know this is an unusual and unorthodox start to the service, and it feels kind of heavy. But I believe that if we can make up in our minds right now that God's got a word for me, how wonderful and powerful this service can be. We've got a few prayer requests tonight. The Threadgill family, continue to remember them as the passing of Coach Threadgill. Bar uh, Barbie Fair and this new little baby, I'm excited to get my hands on it. <laughs> Larry Thrasher, as he goes through recovery, um, he's hard-headed sometimes, and I know we all need prayer, so let's pray for him. Mike Brown needs a touch. Fred Dillman. Uh, Brother Haightley had spoke with Sister Tristel, and he's, he's having some issues with his eyes, and uh, he could really use a touch. We've got Joey Powers. He's in the hospital. He's battling cancer, COVID, and pneumonia. I'd hate to battle one of those by themselves, much less all three of them. And so, you know, it may just be a name to you, but it's a person, it's a father, it's a brother to somebody. So we really need to spend time in prayer for them. Let's remember Chris Gardner's wife. Uh, the doctor gave him two days, and uh, that's a tough thing. That's a hard thing to bear. Um, we're actually going to have somebody stand in prayer we're going to do that when brother gene comes up and sing that way we can keep the flow of service so uh you know whenever brother gene starts singing come on up and we're going to pray for her uh like i said I, I know i know i feel heavy but if you would let's go ahead and stand i believe as the man stood or laid at the uh, whew, the pool of bethesda he was waiting for the stirring of the spirit and I believe that there's the stirring of the Spirit here tonight. I believe God's got something for somebody tonight. And I can get frustrated and sometimes annoyed that God lays on me to speak to people out of my comfort zone. But I believe that God has got somebody tonight. As Stephen struggled to do the thing as Stephen just bore the stones and was ridiculed for his stance God stood on the throne and he looked down from heaven and he let him know Stephen you're mine Stephen I'm going to stand for you tonight so I don't know what you've come into this place bearing I don't know what you've come into this place facing but God is here to speak to you let's take these needs to the Lord Lord, you see each and every need in this place. Oh God, you are a great God. You are the great physician. You are Jehovah. Lord, you are the Prince of Peace. You are the great I Am. You are the beginning and the end. Oh God, you know all. You can look through eternity. You can see our needs. You can see our shortcomings. Oh God, you know every situation in this place. Oh God, and I want you to be a very specific God tonight. I want you to be a God of circumstance. I want you to be a God of hurt, a God of frustration. I want you to be that I am. I want you to be that I am tonight. Oh Lord, I want your presence to sweep across this place right now. In your precious and holy name, amen and amen. As Brother Gene makes his way, Brother Jared can go ahead and be coming. Let's do this whole course. If you've been struggling, this might be a little encouraging if you've been having a bad time like I have. Oh, Lord, 
Let's do one of my favorite old congregational songs, Living by Faith.
Bible says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, courts with praise. Those are things before you get into the house. What does it say about the house? It says, enter the throne room boldly. I believe we need to be bold tonight in the Holy Ghost. You want to see some things done in your life, some situations changed? You've got to get a little bold. We can't just lean over and whimper some prayers. We need to stand up, come before God bold tonight. Brother John Robinson's going to come and sing for us. Give me your hand and let's agree together at the name of Jesus. Crumble at our feet whatever you find on I'll be bound in heaven at the name of Jesus. Satan has to flee. We've got the power in the name of Jesus. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. Oh, Satan not be defeated we've got the power in the name of the lord for many years now satan's tried to stop us oh but the church of jesus it's still alive like a mighty army Marching onward, winning every battle with the Lord by our side. Oh, we got the power in the name of Jesus. We got the power in the name of the Lord. Oh, those saints. 
not be defeated. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. Yes, we've got the power in the name of the Lord. I don't know how one makes the order of service and manages to skip the offering. But if you guessed it, that's yours truly. <laughs> if the men will be go ahead and make their way. This is the missions offering. This is for Grace Crossroads Church in Florence. That's Brother Mike Westfall, and this is First Apostolic Church, uh, Mountain City, and that's Brother Tracy Newman. Um, this right here is important. This is one of the phases of the kingdom. This is something that we should be very invested in. Uh, I know that if it was me, I would want somebody pouring into me and so, let, you know, let's give to these churches. Let's invest in the kingdom. The men of music would go ahead and play some music. worship team would be making their way. Moses was seemingly on the backside of nowhere. An average day, as most would say, a mundane day. And, uh, you know, a lot of people think that the extraordinary thing about it was the burning bush. But the burning bush in something that's equivalent to it, it's almost like the California wildfires. We expect those things to happen. You know, kind of in the situation where he was at, it wasn't unusual for these bushes to catch on fire. But the extraordinary thing about it was the voice of God. And I feel inclined, almost a warning to tell somebody tonight, that you're looking for God to do something extraordinary for you, to speak to you. But it's not in the extraordinary that he's trying to give you his word tonight. It's in the ordinary. The extraordinary thing is the voice of God. So all we have to do tonight is be sensitive to the word of God and sensitive unto the man of God. So let's worship with the worship team, but let's be inclined to the spirit. Celebrate in the presence of the Lord He is worthy to be praised Celebrate in the presence of the Lord He is worthy to be praised Celebrate in the presence of the Lord worthy to be praised celebrate in the presence of the lord he is worthy to be the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. Celebrate in the 
presence of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. Celebrate in the presence of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in Him. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in Him.
deserve better. I won't go another day. I'm here to claim deliverance in Jesus' name. I feel the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost is all over me. I feel the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. I feel the joy. magnify the name of the Lord tonight. I don't know about you, but I've come in the midst of a congregation that is unashamed to praise the name of the Lord. Let's give him a hand clap of praise tonight. Oh, God, have your way, Lord. Have your way. 
Man, man, man. What a great note to come to the pulpit on. I'm a little tired of the devil's game. Keeping me in bondage. Keeping me in chains. But there is no devil that can come against me. I'm blessed. I'm bought. I've been set free. Is that anybody's anthem tonight? Has anybody been bought by the blood? Has anybody been sanctified by the spirit? You can be seated tonight before I get too carried away. Whew, God is good. I'm excited, uh, but before I get started, I do want to give honor and thanks <clears throat> unto our pastor, unto his wife and their, his family uh, for trusting in me. Uh, he contacted me about a week ago, uh, and it, it's sad to say I can say this because he's not here, but... Uh, every time that he texts me now, since he's my pastor, I'm like, oh, Lord, what did I do? You know, it's not the, oh, okay, he's just checking in on me, seeing how my day's going. But immediately I think, what did I do wrong? <laughs> but I love him to death. I'm thankful for him being our shepherd, uh, for praying for us, believing in us. One of the many things that stuck out to me when he texted me, he said, I believe in you. I believe in you. And, you know, I, I'm thankful for that, that uh, what, a, what a great man of God that we have at this church. I'll just say that. I can build him up since he's not here. He'll get on to me if he was here for bragging on him too much. But not only that, I, I'm thankful to be able to serve next to all of these men of God. All of the men, our ministry team is top notch. I know I can call any one of them. I know I can text them, and they would be there. And that says a lot, knowing that I have a support team, knowing that I have somebody to fall back on. Uh, but today, or tonight, I want to preach from a thought, and it's a funny story, but I'll share this just real briefly. Uh, last night, I was sitting there trying to get my final notes together. My sermon come to me a, a couple days ago, and I had everything pretty much placed that I thought should be there. And about 10.30, 10.45, 11 o'clock rolled around, and I'm sitting there just staring at a few different sentences. And I'm struggling to come up with a title. I had five of them. And I'm sitting there like, Lord, I need a punchline. I need something good. You know, in that moment, I began to share with my wife because I started kind of chuckling. I started laughing, and she was like, what? She was on the other end of the couch, and she said, what are you doing? I said, I just had a God moment. He spoke to me. He said, do not strictly focus on the title that you miss the importance of relaying the message. I said, oh, okay, God. I closed my iPad. I looked at her. I said, I think it's time we go to sleep. <laughs> uh, but tonight I do want to uh, speak from a thought. Uh, my title, if I was to title it tonight, would be delayed but not denied. Delayed but not tonight. Uh, and my, my scriptures tonight is very familiar. We've all heard the story. And I will share with you my other thoughts on my titles was God is setting you up. His intentions is beyond expectations. His intentions over my expectations. And then last and final, God said delayed but not denied. Very familiar scripture tonight in John chapter 11 verse 1. I'll begin reading with the help of the Lord tonight. Now verse 1 says, Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and of her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. How many knows tonight there's going to be some situations that we're going to go through? It's not to glorify us. It's not to glorify us or the people around us, but it's simply the edifying and glorifying the kingdom of God. And in verse 4, that's what he's saying but for the glory of God that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Verse 5, Now Jesus loved Mary and her sister and Lazarus. In the very first five scriptures, it already states two different times that God loved Lazarus. He cared for him more than just a friend, more than just a brother, but he was a close acquaintance unto God. He loved Lazarus and this family. 
as he does us tonight. Verse 6 says, When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. God chose to delay his departure to meet with people that was in a chaotic situation. He delayed his departure to go and save them in their middle of their storm. But yet, even though he delayed his coming, he was still right on time. And if you would, go ahead and stand with me tonight. We're going to pray over this word. And I do want to echo Brother Jason. I do believe God has a word for somebody. And I want us to be willing and obedient unto what the word has to say tonight. God, we come before you, Lord. God, you see, if many of us may be in a season of doubt, if we may be in a season of fear or fretfulness that is covering us in our spirit, God, I pray that there will be some encouragement to come behind this pulpit and to go forth and to touch some lives tonight. God, I am just a mouthpiece. I am just a willing vessel, but God, pour into me so I can pour in to your people and God will be careful to praise you for it all in Jesus name we pray amen and amen so in life we begin to question we begin to search and seek out the plan for our life many of us try to do it hard headedly we try to say I'm going to do it my way I'm going to figure things out my way but many of us need to realize tonight that our plan needs to be what God's plan is for us. We need our intentions to be what God's intentions is for our life. Because it doesn't matter what you face. It doesn't matter what heartache you may face. It is for a reason. We go through different situations. We go through different trials in life for a purpose. There is many seasons that we come and we go. We go through seasonal changes every year. We go through the fall, which we are currently in. We go through the winter time, which many of us dislike. We go through the springtime, which many of us love, the heat, the warmth that fills our soul. But I'm here to encourage someone today, living for God can make you feel that same way. Living for God can bring a warmth on the inside of you if you would just stay faithful, if you would just seek after God's plan for your life. We go through spring, we see the changes, we hear the birds chirping. Oh, how happy we are when we experience the seasonal changes that we enjoy. But there's a downfall. There's always a flip side to this thing. Things may be good at the moment, but just hold on. Things may change eventually. You may be in the valley tonight, but Brother Jason, just hold on, brother. Just hold on tonight if you've doubted why you're here. If you've doubted the reason why you're serving God, because your season is about to change. Someone needs to hear me tonight. You've been praying for some things, and I feel this prophetically in the name of Jesus. You've been seeking after God's direction for your life and you just don't understand why the answers have not come. But many of us need to realize tonight that even in the waiting process, there is strength. Oh, somebody needs to hear me tonight because I feel like we are in the waiting process. Yes, we've seen the goodness. We've experienced the revival. We've experienced the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. We've had the altar services. We've had the baptisms. But what we don't realize is we're about to experience a seasonal change. And it's not going to be to bring the church down, but it's going to be the edifying and the glorifying of the kingdom of God. We have to prepare ourselves for these things. Many of us, we are already searching out our clothes. The other night, I was putting up some clothes, and I was going through my jackets because I know down deep inside of me, in the back of my mind, that winter is on its way. I know that the season is going to change eventually on me. I don't want to wake up one morning, Brother Rogers, and be caught by surprise. So what am I doing in the meantime? I'm finding clothes that's going to sustain me. I'm finding clothes that's going to warmth me. I'm finding clothes that's going to do what I need it to do. Many of us is searching in the wrong closet tonight. 
Many of us has went to the springtime closet instead of the wintry time closet in our spiritual life. We've not put on the whole armor of God. We've not put on the breastplate of righteousness. We've not preparated and shot at our feet with the gospel of truth of God. We are going to the wrong closet at the wrong time. We find in seasonal changes, the whole mood begins to change. The whole attitude of our life begins to change. In the summertime, I come into the house happy. I come into the house joyful because I know that it's sunny outside. I know that I don't have to look at the doom and gloom of the wintry months any longer. I'm excited. But church, we better prepare ourselves because even though we may face some darkness, but there is some sunshine that is on its way from gospel tabernacle and I need you to understand that he's looking for a church that's made himself ready he's getting ready to call a church that has been preparated that has been separated that's been dedicated because there is coming a season that's going to change we've not seen revival We've not seen baptisms. Yes, almost 20-something people emerge uh, out of sin into the marvelous light. That's all great and grand, but we're about to experience uh, one by one by one by one. We're going to be able to lose count, uh, and I'm speaking it under the authority of God tonight. Uh, we've not seen uh, what God's about to do for this church. Uh, I'm not preaching for the sinner out there tonight. Uh, I'm preaching the gospel tabernacle because you have prayed. You have fasted. You have sought after God's direction. And it's here. And it's here. The things that you've asked for, it's here. Don't you think that God's delayed you? He may have waited a little bit longer, but he has not denied you. My, my, my. I love preaching. I love it. Don't get me wrong. Because you can have something laid out and the moment you start speaking, God takes control. But tonight I want to encourage somebody. You've doubted. You feared what was going to face you tomorrow. You've been worried about a job situation. You have prayed endless of hours. And I'm speaking to the choir. I'm speaking to Brother Tanner. I prayed for that raise after raise after raise. I fasted meal after meal after meal. And it got to a point I said, God, where are you? God, I'm in a season of doubt. I'm in a season of drought. You may be right there tonight as well. But just hold on. Because what you don't realize is what you've been praying for. God is prepared it God is about to show it and it's going to be better than what you expected why pray for a job brother Keith that's not God's will why pray for a seasonal change that it's not time yet we can pray to get out of the season, but what we've got to realize that it's God ordained. The things that you're facing, God's allowed it to come to you because he knows you're strong. He knows you're going to be faithful to him. So he is just getting you ready for that ultimate blessing. It may be delayed for a moment, but your request has not been denied. This ain't no Facebook tonight where you send a friend request and it says denied because you call upon him in the midnight hour and he comes running up to you he may not answer right then and there but just hold on because help is on the way my 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 I'm stirred up tonight if you can't tell but we've got to understand that we're going to face some afflictions. Just like Brother Levi has been teaching us here lately. We're going to suffer some things. But it is not God ordained for you to live in doubt every day. It's not God ordained for you to struggle each and every day for a breath. It's not God ordained tonight that you worry about the next meal. Because we've got to realize we've got to quit spiritualizing our carnality. We've got to quit spiritualizing spiritualizing our doubt uh, and say well I'm in this because God wanted it uh, but you've got to realize that hey he's waiting for you to get ready for the season to change uh, if you ain't ready woe unto them uh, woe unto them that is sleeping uh, woe unto them that is slandering uh, because God is looking for a people that's prayed up uh, for a people that's ready to receive what he has I'll encourage you tonight this is a personal 
experience. This is a personal story. I'm approaching next month six years in the ministry. Six long years. Don't seem long to some people, but sometimes it gets you. Sometimes it wears you down. But for the up until probably this past year, honestly, I was seeking for more. I was seeking there was a void missing. There was something I said, God, I know as a minister, there's some other calling in my life. Uh, there's somewhere that I'm being pulled to and fro. We went through terrible months uh, of un- uh, doubt, and we went through months uh, that we didn't know what we was going to do, which way we was going to go. But as I began to see God's plan transpire, I shared this with my youth group the other uh, couple Sundays ago. And in that moment, I began to feel fulfillment. I begin to feel satisfaction for once in my life in the spirit because God quenched me and said, hey, this is why I delayed your request. Hey, this is why I delayed your prayer because right here, Gospel Tabernacle on Glover Drive needs you. These young people, they need you. I wanted to evangelize so bad. I wanted to grab my family up and leave town and never look back. But what would happen, Brother Ben, if I went into that season that was not God ordained what would happen if I went into that season and I was not prepared for it I may not be a minister today if I had stepped out on God but thankfully God delayed but he did not deny we've got to realize that in God's plan sometimes there is a delay But what gets us so discouraged is because a lot of times we look at that delay as him saying, no. No, child, no. I've heard no coming up all of my life, several different avenues, several different people. I hate to hear the word no, but we've got to understand tonight if God doesn't give it right now, it's for a reason. If you're praying for that job or just a, a eight to five Monday through Friday, Brother Keith, I really believe this. He's preparing you a manager position somewhere. So why pray for that eight to five when you could make your own hours? Why not pray for that job that you think you need when God may make you a CEO he may let you step out one day and own your own business why settle for less when God's plan is so much greater Mary and Martha they didn't understand they knew Jesus loved them they knew it they sent word to God they said Lord Lazarus is sick we need help Verse 6, I'd point your direction back. When he had heard, therefore, he was sick, he abode two days. He abode two days. God delayed his coming unto them. But previously, before that, he was telling them why. Because it's going to glorify the kingdom. It's going to glorify God. It's going to glorify everything above heaven. Everything in heaven is going to glorify. And they could not understand because they thought they was being denied. But you continue reading. And it tells me in verse 15, listen to this. It says that, and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there. There. What? God, you really was glad you wasn't here to see Lazarus die? You was glad that you was somewhere else? A man that loved Lazarus so and you're saying this? But it says, I am glad for your sakes uh, that I was not there to the intent uh, ye may believe. If you prayed every second of every day and it happened right there, how, are he, how does he know when times get hard that you're going to believe in him? How does he know that you're going to put on the boots and keep on striving when things aren't going your way? How does he know that you're going to hold on? But Mary and Martha, they thought God would just discontinue them. He thought they just forgot about them in the moment of their chaos. But God was getting ready to do something that had not been done in this time. 
In this passage of scripture, he had raised people from the dead, but not once had a man laid four days in his grave clothes. How many of us here tonight has been in our grave clothes? How many of us here tonight has been in that cloth that you buried yourself in, in the mess, in the muck, in the mire? How many of us is waiting for God to come unto us? But he had a purpose. They didn't realize it. He had a purpose. It was to glorify him because he knew that he was going to show up late. But what you got to understand tonight, God is never late. It may be a day or two. It may be a week or months. It may be a couple years. But God does not deny his people. It says to love me and I will go with you even to the end. That means that he's not going to put more on us that we cannot bear. But he was gone. Mary and Martha didn't understand why he didn't take action the first time he heard about it. Just like us, we don't get it. God, I've got a loved one that's sick. God, I've got bills that's stacked up. I owe several different people here and there. I've got people calling me. I've got people looking after me. God, I don't understand where are you. But it just wait. Just hold on a little longer. It says wait upon the Lord and those shall renew their strength. Because there is strength tonight in the waiting process. Because he wants us to be so strong. When that blessing comes, we know how to endure it. We know how to receive it. He knows that we're going to be thankful for it. So just hold on. But Lazarus had been dead. But what we've got to understand tonight, uh, on down in verse 19, verse 23, it says, And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Now have in mind this was to do something to glorify the kingdom. This was to do something out of the ordinary that they had never experienced before. Just like God is wanting to do here tonight for you, for your situation. You may be in a season of drought, in a season of weariness, but he's brought some hope he's brought some joy and he begins to make this journey in verse 20 then Martha as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming went and met him but Mary sat still in the house when God begins to move I don't want to be like Mary I don't want to sit in the house I don't want to sit any longer. I don't want, even though I've been dealing with a delay in my life, uh, he can even delay it any even longer. If I feel the presence of God, I need to move. If I feel the presence of God moving in church, uh, I need to move. But Martha went and met Jesus. Uh, and he come to Jesus, she come to Jesus and said, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother that you loved oh so much, uh, he would still be here. Lord, how could you do this to us? What, what in your right mind are you thinking? We're dealing with sadness. We're dealing with depression. I thought that you loved us, but you've got to understand, church, we're going to have to endure some things. We're going to have to go through some heartache. We're going to have to go through some trying times. But what we've got to realize is, is to glorify God. It's to glorify God. And then in verse 23, listen to this verse 22 I apologize but I know that even now whatsoever that will ask of God God will give it to thee Martha didn't no more believe that than anything at that moment she just got through blessing him out for not showing up on their behalf but there comes that spiritualizing the carnality Trying to make it feel a little better. Trying to hide the wounds. Uh, trying to make sure. It's okay, guys. It's okay to hurt. It's okay to go through a heartache. It's okay to lean on one another. But Jesus said unto her, and well, not to her, but in the Bible, it tells me in Jeremiah 29 and 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Someone needs to listen to this last part. Not only does he have a plan, but his plans are to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and 
a future. Martha didn't understand. What kind of plan is this, God? Making me go through this heartache. Like she thought she was better than someone else. Because our brothers and our sisters face that. We're not exempt from that. But she said, if you had just been here. But listen, and it says in verse 23, Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. What is so crazy tonight is we need to understand even in the delay of God answering our prayers, even in the delay of God coming to our rescue, you can still find hope. You can still find peace. You can still find joy. Well, Brother Tanner, how do you do that? Get your face in the Word. Get your face in the altar. Find your prayer closet. Seek after God's will because without Him, it is impossible to make it through the seasons of life seasons come and go it's life it's life we're going to face things but we don't have to stay there I don't want to be one that when the seasons change uh, it's summertime everybody's out playing golf uh, everybody's out riding the boats uh, everybody's out on the side by side but oh little as me uh, is over here weary in the winter time with my coat on crying about my pathetic problems that I'm going through I don't want to be caught uh, in the adversity that the devil throws at me I don't want to be caught up uh, in the snares of life uh, but I want to live life to the fullest uh, because he said I will give you life and give you more abundantly your brother's gonna rise oh man how great if if God himself had just said that to me brother I'm about to shout everywhere I'm about to speak in a language nobody's ever experienced before. You talking about some fluent tongues? I would do it because that gave me hope. He said he will rise again. But Martha comes back with another snare and says, oh yeah, in the resurrection. Listen, church. We don't have to wait to the resurrection. We don't have to wait for God to call us home to get our healing. We don't have to wait to get to heaven to begin to live a better life for God. We don't have to wait until our number's called to call upon his name for joy or for hope. But God answered right back to Martha. If you think you've got a comment for God, just wait. He's going to come back. Just wait. He's going to answer somehow. It says, hey, but what you need to realize tonight, I am the resurrection of life. I am the one who gives breath in that body I am the one and what we need to understand my God I feel it tonight uh, that resurrection of life is here we've been delayed long enough uh, we've been in doubt long enough uh, the resurrection of life uh, is sweeping through this house uh, it's all over these pews uh, if you could only feel what I feel brother Dylan because there is hope uh, there is joy there is peace uh, and it's here every service I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection. And then her eyes begin to behold the miracle they've never experienced. They travel to the tomb. They roll it back. Lazarus is laying down a cloth over him. And he says, Lazarus, come forth. He's calling us tonight, guys. Child, come forth. Brother Tanner, come forth. You thought that I forgot you, but I never left you. You thought that I had left you, but I never forsaken you. Come forth, Lazarus. Come out of your grave clothes. And immediately he began to rise. And all the ones that was doubting, listen to this. Your situation is not for you. Your situation is not for the ones that believe, but it is for the unbeliever. Brother Jason, we're going to face some things. We're going to face some heartaches. We're going to face some situations that we don't understand, but only God does. But what we've got to understand, that when Jesus walked up on the scene, there was people watching.
There was people taking notes. It said all the Jews that behold their eyes had seen what was taking place. They began to talk about what was going on. They began to talk about how good God was. And said man he must have really loved this man. After four days getting close to this dead body and speaking life into it. So I'm here to encourage someone that we've got to understand God is ready to speak life into your situation. God is ready to speak life into your family. God is getting ready to speak life into your work, your work lifestyle. God is getting ready to speak life in your community. But are you ready? Are you ready? For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Say that over and over in your mind when you're going through something. For God knows the plans that he has for me. And it's not to harm me. It's not to get me down and out. But it's for me to prosper. It's for me to experience hope and to have a future. Not just any future, but a bright future. God don't want you to live in darkness. Just like he didn't want Lazarus to die at that moment. And he began to walk on the tomb. He began to walk up to Lazarus. And could you imagine being Mary and Martha thinking oh God you're late but yet he was right on time we've got to understand that through the seasonal changes everything is temporary Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 I'm coming to a close to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven many of us have been in a time of sowing Many of us have been in a time of faithfulness. Many of us have been in a time of striving to do better. Many of us has been in a time seeking after God's will for our life. But there also comes a time of reaping. There also comes a time of reaping. And our seasonal change is about to flop. God's seen our faithfulness. He has seen this church so day in and day out into the community. Into the ones that we didn't even know. And he's about to let us reap what we have sowed but are you ready are you ready we've got to make ourselves ready in order to contain the blessing of the Lord a time to be born a time to die a time to plant a time to pluck up that which is planted a time to kill and a time to heal a time to break down and a time to build up a time to weep oh man a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, and a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away, a time to rent, and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. How many is long for that time of peace? How many? has longed for that time of reaping what you have sowed. I'm trying to close, I promise, but real quick in Psalms 1, verse 1, this is how we're going to be able to withstand when God delays our requests. Verse 1, blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night, and he shall, listen to this, here it is right here, church, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers or waters that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. And listen to this. If you're not doing that, the ungodly are not so, but are the chaff which the wind driveth away. I don't want the wind to blow me over. I don't want the enemy to win this battle. I don't want the enemy to steal my victory because I've been on a delay. I've been distracted before I've been in the time of doubt I've been in the time of drought but now is my time to receive now my time is to reap now my time is now this church's time is now we've not seen the things that are coming because we've been like a tree planted and rooted and grounded in the word of God stand with me tonight brother Keith will play us something soft I'm going to open these altars, and I know I went far 
beyond my time. Pastor can text me and get on to me later. Maybe we can work that out. But I believe this was for somebody. As many times that we, we get in a situation that when it seems like things are not going our way or when God don't answer right away that he's automatically telling us no. He's not telling you no, church. Listen to this. We've got to understand that his no's his no does not always mean no, but what if it's actually intended for not yet? Or what if that no is intended for just wait? Or what if that no means I have better if you'll hold on to faith? What if, Brother Chris, what if we're right at the point of our blessing and we give up? Oh, but the joy day uh, that we're going to experience uh, when we hold on to faith uh, and our ultimate season change uh, is when God calls us home. When God says, enter in thy good and faithful servant. Uh, how are we going to be able to withstand the seasonal change? It's easy. It's simple. We must have faith. Do you want to experience your true fulfillment tonight in the Spirit? I beg and plead unto you, God has your answers. God has your direction here tonight. I pray that you would not let this moment pass you by. These altars are open. If you are tired of being in the delay and you are ready to receive what God has, come and He will give it unto thee.